Hi guys, this is Carlin Laborio with Teaching RLA with Carlin Laborio, and I wanted to show you some very important accommodations that you may want to use or be, be aware of with your students. This one is called Spelling Assistance, and also another one I'm going to be talking about is Speech to Text. So spelling assistance, that one is probably what you would imagine, what you're familiar with when you write an email and it underlines the spelling words in red. And then you go back and you fix your mistakes before you send the email. Well, on the star test, when they write their composition or they write their short constructed response, there will be a box and they can practice this on the Cambium practice test. So when they would type in the box, one thing that you need to be aware of and you, they need to practice this and you need to train them on is they have to type their essay and then they have to actually go up to the toolbar in Cambium and they have to click spell check. When they click the spell check button, then it will underline any mistakes in red. So that's something that you're going to have to show them how to do, because if they don't click that button, it will not show them any mistakes and they will have no idea. So that is important. Um, also with speech to text, speech to text is an accommodation that I've been using for years, but it's really only for severe cases. I think I've used it with one student every other year, maybe one or two students at the most in my whole pod. So this would be for us a, a situation where a student doesn't really have that alphabetical awareness of the sounds matching with the letters. So spelling assistance is not going to help that child if they don't even know the letter that the word starts with. So if you have any severe cases like that, it could be, you know, usually it's, it's a, it's a severe, uh, severe disability. Uh, one of your, one of your SPED students is normally what, who would get speech to text. If, if they are able to talk like a robot and it can pick up their, their language. So that's another thing you have to kind of test out in the classroom to see if that's going to work for them or not. Um, it's not for everybody. So if, if you do determine that it helps that student and that it's something that they absolutely need, uh, then you would need to have that put in their paperwork during the ARG committee or the 504 committee. And you would need to practice it and use it regularly with success in the classroom before you could use it on STAR. And then that student would usually need to be tested one-on-one -on -one, since they're going to be talking into a microphone. You, they, you wouldn't want that to distract the other kids. Um, with this day and age, with having to have the doors locked, um, I, have a, I have my student, I have one or two kids that are using it this year, and I have them go on the carpet with the uh the calm in the calm down corner and that's where they record their voice because if they're sitting at their normal table right next to someone it will pick up the voice of the person next to them so basically all they have to do is open a google doc and they would click tools and you would have to teach them how to do this several times um but they will get it eventually. So you teach them how to click, open up a Google Doc, click on the plus, then they click um, tools, and then they click voice typing so they can look for the little microphone. And the first time they use it, it'll ask them, do you allow the microphone? And then you say yes. And then this will come up. So when they're ready to start talking, they click this button and I, I usually demonstrate for them and then I let them practice in front of me and then I let them go off and record their, their essay. Okay, so this is how I would do it. You need to talk like a robot, period. 
Do you understand? Question mark. I love this exclamation point. Okay. So when they click the button again, that could be when they're thinking or they're looking back at their paper or they just want to pause. So one thing you might have noticed is you do have to teach them to say period, question mark, exclamation mark. And you do have to kind of say each word and pause and almost talk like a robot. So I kind of did that as a joke, but the kids like that. They laugh. And that is how you have to kind of talk in order for the computer to understand you. Okay, so that is speech to text. The important thing with that is teaching them how to put the punctuation or how to say the punctuation and then having them read it back if they can to make sure it makes sense before they turn it in. Okay, so we talked about spell check. We talked about how most students would type their essay and then they would click that spell check button at the top and then it would underline any mistakes in red. So there is another program that is called CoWriter that I've been using for years. I love it. And I just want to show you because I, I do realize that not every district has this, but when you see the benefits and what it can do, you're just, you're just going to love it. So maybe you can show your district how amazing it is. Um, so the way CoWriter works is the student would turn on CoWriter. They would log in through through Clever, uh, as long as your as your district has the subscription. And then let's say they were they were going to type their story or their or their ECR and they were writing a word. So let's say they were writing the. So even when they just touch the T, type the T, they can hover their mouse. And just by hovering their mouse, it they can listen to the different choices. So that is what makes CoWriter different. And I just love that for, for your dyslexic kids or any kid that just needs to hear the difference. And then they can click right on that. So it's almost like a predictive text. They only need to, and when I'm training them on this, I, I teach them how they just need to type one or two letters. So let's say they were writing the author's message. See how I, I don't know how to spell author, but if I pause and I look at that blue box and I listen to each one. Author, authors, authorities, authority, action. And then I can say, oh, this is the word I'm looking for. So sometimes when you use spell check, it doesn't, it doesn't know. But if you pause and you, I just love co-writers. So then, you know, they could go back and say the author's message. Authors. And they could listen. Most. Message. Message. And after they click the word, it reads it to them. After they type a whole sentence... He kind of already knows what I'm about to say. One. And then usually when you get to the period, it reads the whole sentence. Um, from CoWriter, you can also click on the speech to text if your student has that. So it's kind of an all-in-one. And this is something they can use on Google Docs. And I feel like it's a skill that they could, that could help a dyslexic student for their whole life. This is not just for the star test. This can help them in college. This can help them to, to write papers when they get older. So I just love this accommodation. And I think that um, the combination of spell check, co-writer, or speech to text, these are things that can really help our students. So they're worth looking into and seeing, especially with the star test being 100% online this year, I think it's something that, that we all need to look into to see, does our student absolutely need that? Is it something that would really help level the playing field? So I hope this video helped you to understand
this a little bit better. And I hope you have a great night. Thanks. Bye.